Well, hello everyone to the second season of Ponderosa North for the Love of Bonanza. That's right, I've been doing this little show for a year. Um, I'm kind of um, amazed that a program uh, from 64 years ago could generate that much content, but there is plenty more to come. And today I'm going to focus on who gives a boot. Well, I do. Not only did Bonanza foster my love of horses and Lake Tahoe and the Western lifestyle, um, it also <laughs> fostered my love of boots. Every time I move, my friends go, you got enough boots, Barb? Uh, no, there's never enough. No, it's like dogs and potato chips. You can never have enough. So look what I got for Christmas. The boot book. Um, and it has all kinds of really interesting facts and and designs of, of cowboy boots, but I'll just start with a little bit of history. Um, riding and equestrian boots have been around for centuries in Europe, obviously, um, you know, war horses. We owe so much to the horse. My goodness, uh, we would not have the civilization we, today without the help of the horse. We still measure things in horse, horse horsepower and and um, it's just, we owe a debt to the equine. We really, really do. They were brought over from Spain to North America, as was the cowboy boot, as we know it. Um, uh, they were um, sometimes not embellished like they are today. They weren't really a fashion statement. They were really function, made for function. Narrow toe to fit into the stirrup and the, the heel to keep the boot in the stirrup and keep you in the stirrup. So I just want to show you one little um, page here, and that is Hop Along Cassidy's boots. Um, let's see if you can see it. See them there? That is very similar to what Lorne wore. See that big chunky heel? Very similar. His boots were not embellished. None of the Cartwright boots were uh, fancy in any way, shape, or form. Um, but Lorne wore a very simple, plain boot. But he did wear lifts, which I'm not sure why, because he was six feet tall. At least that's what his profile says. Um, so I'm not sure why he chose to wear them, but they're quite obvious. And, you know, ladies, it's walking around in high heels for 14 years. It's not easy. It's not easy on the body. Um, but Lauren chose to do that. Uh, Purnell, again, a very plain boot with a very low heel, black, um, very functional boot, mid-calf. Uh, the one thing about Adam's boots, though, that I always noticed was that they were always absolutely filthy. That is his black pair of boots. Um, for somebody who's pretty fastidious, um, he uh, never cleaned his boots. He was shown one time going to a dance, polishing his boots, but um, he, they were always dirty. And sometimes you can even catch Purnell wearing his street shoes. I was watching the Spitfire the other day, and he had one scene. He came out uh, uh, the porch, uh, and he's just wearing his lace-up dress shoes. It's like, I have one scene to do today. I'm not even going to get into wardrobe. As soon as this is over, I'm going home. So um, I, you can watch for that. It, it happens quite often, him wearing his street shoes. Um, uh, um, Dan wore a very um, narrow pointed toe boot classic in black um, very uh, very much very much um, uh, a classic style of boot I'll show you some of mine which, which are similar but yeah they all wore very simple unembellished boots Joe's were different. He started out with a black pair early on. Um, again, unembellished. And um, here's another close-up. He wore lifts, too. His profile says that he's 5'9", but I think that's a bit generous. Um, he, he definitely wore. But he wore these buckskin suede boots which are a bit different than everybody else. Here's a bigger, better close-up of them. Um, so yeah, um, 
Haas bought a fancy pair of boots one time and they blistered his feet so bad he couldn't eat. That's pretty bad. So I'm just going to show you a few of my boots. Um, these are kind of my pride and joy. These are my classic Tony Llamas. Um, the most comfortable boot you will ever wear. I bought these in the 80s and um, I wear them often. I love them. This is a pair I got in Virginia City. These are my snakeskin red boots. Again, very comfortable. Love these. Got these in the 90s. When I was growing up, I was boot deprived. Um, I desperately wanted a pair of cowboy boots and um, they just weren't available in the Northeast. They just, you ain't getting a pair, so I'm making up for it now. This is my latest pair that I got this pair in Dallas. This is a more modern type toe, this square toe. Um, these are Durango's, I believe. There are several boot makers, um, Ariat, Dan Post, Durango, Laredo, Justin, Tony Lama, um, and there are plenty of custom boot makers who are just absolute artists in their own right. And you can order any kind of skin that you like, leather. You could probably even get a pair of vegan boots if that was, that was what you wanted. They'd find a way. Um, this is a Cavalry Fry boot. Fry is uh, another boot maker that's been around a long time. This is a Cavalry boot and again very comfortable. Uh, they don't look comfortable but they are amazingly comfortable and I just noticed I have big feet. Look at the size of that. They fit They fit me but they're kind of big. Um, I also have another pair of Fry boots. This is a Campus uh, cowboy boot they call it. Um, very, very popular in the 60s on college campuses. That's another Fry, Fry boot. Um, and last but not least, my Nashville pair. This is very similar to what uh, Dan wore with the narrow toe. Um, but I got these in Nashville. These are an another pair of Tony Llama boots. Um, and I just love them. I just love my boots. I can't help it. I'm, I'm just, um, I, I'm just... I'm just in love with my cowboy boots. I've told my friends, bury me with my cowboy boots. That's all That's all I want. The original boot maker really, the cowboy boot really doesn't have a designer. They kind of say the first boot makers were Charles uh, Heyer. Um, first uh, entering in Texas uh, or Kansas, Oklahoma area. Um, but again, brought over from the Spanish. It's based on a Spanish style boot as were our beautiful horses. So that's it for the first uh, episode of 2023. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and um, get out there and get yourself a great pair of cowboy boots. You just won't regret it. Talk to you soon on Ponderosa North for the love of Bonanza. Bye for now.